Wagwan, wagwan. Welcome to my channel. I am the DIY Yachty. Welcome back if you've been here before. In this video today, I'm working on a 2010 uh, Chevy Impala. This is a police package. And the issue with this car has a, a oil a leak at the oil cooling lines. These are what the new uh, replacement lines look like. And getting into this, we have to remove this entire uh, front clip of this car, which is this uh, plastic covers here, the front bumper, and the lower um, like dust dust cover below the bumper. Okay, so this is the first piece. Then uh, moving on to the headlight. Uh, this is a seven millimeter or um, on this car, you could use a 7mm or um, a Phillips screwdriver. I'm not sure if those were the original bolts or, or screws, I should say. Then it's this clip here that is towards the inside. This one is broken, so I used my pliers to get that out of there. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like on the other side. Okay, this that this is what it looks like in the you know without it being broken and I'm getting the screw removed and once once the screw comes out of there basically you hold the light and pull it forward just hold it and pull straight forward and there it's hooked in it in the both corners of the light then basically you unplug the wiring harness. This one's a little tight, like it had some moisture going in there or some dirt, so it's a little hard to get out of there. Okay, but lights come out the same way on either side. Okay, so next we're going to get these clips. And these are the tools that are needed or, or really used for these clips, but I don't have that tool. So I'm actually using my crimping tool here, which can work, you know, just as well. Um, all you got to do is you use it to grab the head, grab, grab the head of the clip and pull up and it will release. So there is four to the top and then there are four down here at the corner of the bumper this is right by the wheel well so I'm, I'm actually using you see I'm using my little um, uh, cutting pliers here so I just stick it under the um, clip and pull up on it and it releases so the next thing I'm pulling are these bolts that's holding the bumper on the but they're located to the inside of the bumper so when once that um, dust shield is moved You'll see there are two, there's a screw here and there's a nut towards the front. The screw has to come with the pointer, that screw has to come all the way out while the nut just, it just needs to be loosened up, the nut in the front. I had, I had went ahead and taken it all the way out. The nut really, you just have to loosen that up a few turns. It doesn't have to come all the way off. Okay. So these are some other clips below the bumper and trying to get it here with my cutting pliers but that's not working out so I grab my crimper again and let's pop those out of there and on the side of the bumper I'm uh, in front of uh, both wheels there are two uh, of those um, screws again two uh, seven millimeter screws and these clips you see me pulling are all in front of the bumper, the lower front of the bumper. Okay, so this is the other side. Everything's loose. You just pull forward, pull the bumper forward, and it will fall right off of there. Okay, so get that moved out of the way. That's what the front of the car looks like with the bumper off. So next we have, well, before we get to that, let me show you what the lines look like. These are the cooling lines, the, the right and left side. Okay, but to get to those, I have to move this dust shield here. 
and that's held in place by three clips also so I'm gonna release okay and this middle one I really didn't have to release this middle one um, it actually just slides over it I could have just pulled forward on it and it would have slid off of there but I found that out after I released the clip so okay but only only the two outer clips really needs to be um, unsnapped middle one the the it will just slide right over there okay so you can see the oil leak here and it's coming from the cooling line so it's only one line really that's leaking but I'm gonna go ahead and replace both lines because it, it really doesn't make any sense to go through all of this and just do one line because if one is leaking it, it's pretty sure the other will be behind it sooner or later all right so getting these clips out of here I would recommend to spray maybe some kind of um, penetrating fluid or put some kind of oil you know on there just before you know, to get it a little lubed because it was kind of um, rusted here all right so get both of those clips off of there and I um, actually had to move the lower radiator hose had to move that out of the way so it did involve draining a little bit of coolant okay so these are the lines going into the engine block all right so you see here the the line was actually frozen onto the um going into the cooler the line was frozen so i i had to cut it here with my axaw And it's no problem cutting these lines because, like I said, uh, they're getting new ones, replacing these. Okay. So then these pull pretty easily because they're not they're not really tight in there. They're you know they're just snug. So basically, I'm pulling these because that 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 piece that I'm pulling I have to reuse. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure you could probably get new ones at the dealership, but I'm um, just at the time of doing this video. It was a weekend, and the dealerships were closed. So, you know, I, I'll instead of having to wait, I'm you know I'm trying to get this job done. So, I'm just trying to do it the fastest way possible. So, wow. So this broke. And the whole process, the whole um, thing of using the heat was tr trying to get it loosened up, but it actually ended up breaking off on me. So, trying to get it out of there. That didn't work. So, this is my other attempt. And that's doing the trick. See, I got it knocked out of there. And that's what it looks like so I'm actually gonna get this cleaned up get some of that oxidation out of there and also I'm there's a rubber o-ring on the inside of there I'm gonna pop that out and replace it you can see it coming out there Remember, I, I heated this up to, um, I heated it up to get that broken off piece out of there. So that's why I'm replacing this O-ring because, because of the heat, I don't really trust reusing this O-ring. I'm thinking it may leak again. All right. So testing this on there to make sure it goes on great. Okay. So this is the other side. Uh, um, I had to cut that side off of there too. So this is one thing I didn't show earlier. There's a O-ring here that I have to you have to remove if you're gonna heat this up. Remove that O-ring because you can reuse it if it's not damaged. 
Okay, so there's actually two two O-rings to each to each side of these. That's one there and the one on the inside that I removed. Okay, so remember this is the other side. So this side actually came apart much easier than the other one. This is how I intended for the other side to come apart, but it ended up breaking off, you know, which happens from time to time. So you just got to deal with it, work around whatever happens as you go along. Okay, you can see that oxidation inside of there. Get that cleaned out. And, then, you know, if you have a wire brush, once you're done, it's good, you know, Go over this with a wire brush. Get it nice and clean. And test it on the new um, line. See how it fits. So this is my um, O-rings, assorted O-rings. So you know, doing these jobs, you never know what size O-ring you might need. So you match it up with whatever size you need. So remember I said I heated, you know, I heated this so I didn't want to reuse the O-rings that was on the inside of this. So I'm replacing it with a new O-ring. And you want to, you know, put some oil on these once you've um once you've got them all cleaned up and the O-rings replaced, you want to oil them up. Remember to put all your O-rings back. This is the outer one. The one I did bef just before was the inner one. Okay. So we've got both of them cleaned and oiled and the O-rings replaced. So now I'm putting them back in place. And these, you don't have to torque down on them because remember, it's got the rubber O-ring, so you just want to snug them. Okay, they don't have to be torqued. And, and also, this cooler is aluminum, so you don't want to torque down on this because you can break it or crack it. And you see up above there, it has um, like a you can some a area you can grab with another um, wrench if you want to, you know, just to be on the safe side. All right, so now we're on the inner part of the cooler line. It's going to get these removed. So there's like a little dust shield there, just a little plastic dust shield. Let's take a screwdriver, pry back on that. Move it out of the way. So these are the little retainers, retaining springs. And um, actually, a pick a pick would do much better at getting these um, springs removed or unlatched, you know. But I'm using a this is a tiny screwdriver here that I'm using. And you're not always gonna have you know the best tools or the, the correct tools for a job, but. You know, you do the best with what you have, and you improvise as you go along. You know, if you can get a better tool, great. If you can't, just work at what you have. That's what it looks like there, the training spring or clip. Now I'm 
going to get this other side. And like I said, you know, the, the pick the pick would be a, a much uh, easier time getting this clip, you know, unhooked. There we go. Clip out. Just pull one line at a time. Make sure you have your container to catch the oil. And I, I just barely um, raised this car up. You know, it's, I didn't really jack the wheel off the ground. I just raised the car up to give me a little more space to work. So. That is one line out. This is a new one. And remember to grease or put a little bit of oil on your um, connections just before you know you put them back together. Because you want to make sure they they slide in pretty easily. They don't do any damage to the seals, the new seals, like tearing them up or you know, so we're reinstalling a um, clip, locking clip, and it has three holes. Okay, so there's one on each side and one to the middle. So just going to pay attention to where those holes are and make sure the clips, the the little um, prongs on the clips, get back you know, seated in all three holes. This is the other side. If you find this video helpful, please consider, you know, uh, subscribing to the channel. Give me a thumbs up, you know, if you found it information uh, information uh, helpful or beneficial it um, lets YouTube know you know that I'm doing a good job over here or a decent job at least you know and I definitely appreciate that got a clip in there so once you once you reinsert that clip you want to make sure that you can see it, you know, at the back, the back of the, um, where the line goes in there. And you can, it's a good idea to grab a hold of that line and also, um, you know, shake it, you know, put some pressure, rock it back and forth and see, make sure it's in there firmly. Okay, there we go. So now okay, I'm pulling on it there. Make sure it's in firmly. So now we can get our dust shields back in place. And we're going to position our lines just as they were, as the old ones were. Okay, there, there is um, something that I didn't catch on camera when I was taking off or, or pulling it apart. Um, there are some um, clips that holds the, these lines, which I'm going to show you in a minute once I get this other side.
There are some plastic clips that hold the lines or help to support the line, really. So these are the clips I'm referring to. There's one to the front here, front, uh, right at, at the corner of the lines. And then there's another one to the inside. So this inside one, the line was um, kind of rubbing on the frame of the car. So I used that clip to cushion the lines off of the frame of the, frame of the car. You don't, you don't want these lines rubbing on the frame of the car because over time it'll cut a hole in the lines and you'll develop another leak that way. Okay. So what I'm doing here now is getting the lower radiator hose reinstalled. And this is just um, held in place by a clamp, collapsible clamp. Okay, so there's a clamp there, holds back in place. Got the clamp back in place. And wasn't a lot of fluid that came out, you know, taking this hose apart. It wasn't too much, so i go back and get that fluid. Um, Got the system top back up. And what I'm going to do is, before I put the car back together, I'm actually going to run the engine and make sure I don't have any leaks. This was this is one line I actually had to move out the way to get some room to work. Just basically, I snapped this, snapped that. Um, off of there with a pair of pliers, like uh, needle nose pliers, so getting it back in place. Yeah. The engine running right now, and what I'm doing is I'm checking for leaks. Good. Before, you know, with the before replacing these parts, you know, the oil will be pouring out of there. So we're good to go. All right. So like I said, I'm DIY Yachty. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Please consider subscribing. It's totally free to do so. Hit that thumbs up. Okay, and you can share it to somebody you think this video might be beneficial to. Okay.